Welcome to another episode of Atomic Vinyl Reviews, and today we're taking a look at the SH Monster Arts Mechagodzilla 1974 figure, as you may have uh, guessed by reading reading the title of the video. Um, so you can see him here, and uh, just before I get into the actual review of this figure, I'll just sort of talk about um, talk about my thoughts about the design and, and all that sort of stuff. And I will actually add, I'm filming this on my 22nd birthday, so that's pretty cool. Um, this definitely won't be coming out uh, anywhere near that time, because it usually takes me at least a week before I can upload these things. And then when I do upload them, it usually takes like um, two or three days before it, re it actually uploads onto YouTube, because my internet is garbage. But, um, let, let's talk about this, uh, this design, so, uh, I'll just, uh, bring him in focus, and, um, don't you worry, later in the video, the majority of it will be, um, I'll be out of, the, out of frame, and we'll just be looking at, uh, at this guy, and, uh, and we'll be talking about him, but just for the moment, I'll just cut away and bring him in focus. Alright, and there he is, he should be nice and in focus for you guys to take a look at um as you can see he's got that beautiful riveted uh, riveted design which um yeah that's i really like this incarnation of mechagodzilla the the movie and this design is just it, it really worked for for the time and it still is my favorite all all time mechagodzilla uh, Kiryu is closely behind, I must say, because uh, that, that was also a very well done Mechagodzilla. The uh, other, in other incarnations don't really speak to me, but this one's my favorite. And the main reason for that is, um, like I said, the, the movie is fantastic. It's my, it's just all out fun, really awesome, really creative, really just crazy, um... Showa era Godzilla film. The the music in that movie was really awesome. The the main Mecha Godzilla theme is just awesome. It's one of the best music in in the entire series, and I really love this Mecha Godzilla's origin and just his sort of um, evil cold character. That being he he didn't really he was very much just a robot. But with that, oh, he's not in focus anymore. Unfortunately, <laughs> sorry. There you go. But just that the expression on his face, that really robotic, sort of um, sort of fifties B movie type design with all the, the the rivets and the very metallic looking metal, and just that whole uh, story of him like pretending to be Godzilla and all that in that film was really awesome, and. I was just very excited and hopeful that they would bring this figure out. So when they announced it, the, I, I instantly knew that this was a figure that I was not going to skip. And um, in saying that, it's not a perfect figure, and uh, there have been some legitimate uh, criticisms of it, and a lot, a lot of dr uh, people sort of complaining, especially in America, that uh, the price had, that this figure wasn't up to the qualities of the price because the price had gone up. Or something like that for them and, uh, and there were some issues with that I actually live in Australia so the the prices for monster arts figures have always consistently been the pretty much the exact same price as this one was actually usually more expensive this was actually one of the cheaper ones so I don't share that's that uh, sentiment but uh, that's something uh, something that uh, initially a lot of people have been talking about when this figure was released. Um, people also had some criticisms about it, mainly to do with uh, the arm joint here, which I'll get into later. For me, um, I'm not like super happy about this, but it actually honestly doesn't bother me at all. It ha I have some other uh, things that to criticize about this figure, but very different from like 90% of what other people are saying. 
Uh, but overall, I will say that um, I, I really like this figure, and I'll, I'll get into why, and I'll just um, get into all my thoughts about... Um, so I've got all the stuff about what I think about the movie and the design out of the way, so we'll uh, get into the actual figure. So I'm going to cut away, and we'll be in the in a close-up of this guy from now on, so. Alright, so I've got him nice and close-up and in focus for you guys, and you can really see they did a lovely job with this sculpt here. I really like it. It's a... Uh, out of... <laughs> I don't uh, necessarily have the best uh, versions of, of this Mechagodzilla in figure form, like I said earlier, but uh, this, this really is a great sculpt, and... It really captures that lovely rivet, <laughs> riveted um, design that he has. Um, great detail all around. Um, I have some issues with a couple of little bits about uh, how they assemble the sculpt together and how some of the articulation works, but um, we'll get into that a bit later. But you can just first let's uh, admire some of this sculpt here. So very much just like he looked in the film, uh, there's some cool touches with the this the soft sort of um, concertina type joints, I'm not, not really sure what you'd call that, that he has here and on his arms he, in this joint he has those thin, thin little plastic rings which mimic that, that sort of design like they have sculpted on his legs here. And um, yeah, that, a lot of people are having problems about that getting stuck under this floating piece here. For me personally, that hasn't been an issue. Even if it does, they even actually put out a, a video of how you fix it by like pushing the arm back in and pulling it out and it kind of comes back out with it and, and that uh, seems to work for people. I don't even, gen gen generally I don't like bend this one too much and when I do with this one I'm, I'm very careful with it making sure not, not to get them caught under here and and that's all fine for me so that's not one of my issues uh, another cool thing is he has die cast feet a lot of these um, mecha figures do have die cast feet like the uh, Kiryu and the Mogira as well it just helps them stand a little better and um, he actually can stand um, really well without needing to to have his tail to help him balance, which is cool. And yeah, overall they they did a really good job with this mechanical sculpt. I'm actually curious how they sculpted this guy because, for uh, for the most part, I know their figures are hand sculpted. Sometimes they use like the CGI uh, models from the film and they 3D print that and um, work off that as the main base sculpt for all the for some of their figures. Uh, but this one, I haven't really heard anything about how they did how they did it. But if this is hand sculpted, which some evidence um, about it like makes it look a little bit like it could be hand sculpted, just some of the way it's finished and the textures on it. Um, and I I think that would be really impressive if it is because uh, as a sculpt, uh, somewhat of a sculptor myself, I know for a fact anything mechanical that needs to be um, done like straight angles and all that. In, in the form of a uh, something that's hand sculpted is actually very difficult to pull off and make it look uh, convincing and not just look kind of really dodgy and wonky and all that so um, this one looks like it it could just uh, it has that sort of um, it successfully pulls off that vibe like it, it is this uh, the sort of rubber suit but done in a very angular way it just it's just off just enough that it looks very convincing like the, the figure but not like super sharp like say something like the the Mo Mogira one which I have here uh, I'll show them all the mechs off uh, together <laughs> later in the video uh, I might have to change the camera focus for that just so they can all fit in but uh, well, actually we'll, we'll see if they can fit so I've got a, a couple of other mecha Godzillas and last but not least Kiryu So there you can uh, kind of see another thing about this figure. He's a little bit shorter. He's actually um, 
kind of standard size for some of the monster arts in the monster arts line around like that six inch height or something like that i uh, don't remember off by heart but he is a, a slightly shorter figure and the fact that he has a very short stubby tail is another sort of issue people have taken with this guy is that he does uh, look small compared to other figures like he's actually a little taller than kind of short figure like the 54 godzilla He's a little bit taller, uh, but the fact that he's uh, he's not very bulky, unlike some of the other figures. Like uh, this guy, he's got the long tail, he's got the big spines, he's got the very bulky lower body. While the seventy four Mechagodzilla, he's very thin legs to you know it helps him be very mobile and all that sort of stuff. But it it isn't very helpful. And to make this guy look sort of huge and intimidating, but he does have a nice, really round sort of body, like a big barrel, and 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 he is very accurate. So again, I'll just show show off some of the sculpt really close up and give you guys just a really good look at this guy. And he's got those sort of classic, really short, stylized spines back here. Got that tail fin segmented tail. Uh, this is a part that I have some issues with, which I'll bring up very soon. And yeah, I, I really love the way this is sculpted in here. Uh, you can see a bit of a seam line coming off just here. It's not really, it's not as noticeable in person, but it's coming up a little bit in camera. And it's a very nicely done design. I'll show you him next to I'll show you this guy next to actually a very similar figure the Bandai uh, I believe this is a Bandai Creations Mechagodzilla 1974 which they're, they are surprisingly very similar and you can kind of kind of see just the, the slight jump that you, that you get like looking at this guy he comes out nice on camera actually the, the texturing and the paint but the, the sculpt his face looks very goofy this guy not so much. I don't think he's like perfect. There's something about his uh, his little nose, those two barrels. It looks like it's sticking out just a bit long, or that his bottom jaw is just a bit off or something. But um, compared to something like this, you, you really see the difference. And this is one of my favorite Bandai, Bandai figures, by the way. He also did a nice job on his hands. And later you'll see that he does come with uh, some accessories, so different hands. Which is um, pretty cool. I don't really use that stuff all that much, but I'm just I'm always happy when you do get something, uh, as as most collectors are. But for me, they're not like a deal breaker. The the effect pieces for the most part, except for with the Fire Rodan one, which I got that one solely for the um, the effect pieces and that. But uh, so overall, I'm really happy with the sculpt. There's nothing that, that I, I'd really change about it. Uh, in person, it looks a lot better, I find, than on camera. The rivets are done really nicely. It's got a consistent goodness about it, I guess. Um, Paint-wise, uh, I do share the sentiment a bit that the paint on him is a little bit too um, monocolored. It does fit with what he looked like in the film, I'd say more so than some people would argue. Uh, it's sort of that aluminium um, or aluminum uh, for the uh, American audience out there, sort of uh, me metallic color. And he doesn't really have very many highlights or anything like that, apart from, you know, just the little colored bits in the red there. And that, that I'd say is a little disappointing, but I think it's a really nice color for him. And I remember in the first uh, Mechagodzilla film, he was actually pretty much that alum aluminium color and I don't I'd have to re-watch it to see like how many hi different highlights and stuff he has but like even like I said looking at the Bandai here I do uh, in, in person this one kind of looks more like a grayish dark one dark color and not less metallic but just the fact that he has a bunch of little highlights of color here and there is actually really nice about this figure and that's something that makes it pop and I really like that but probably less film accurate film accurate than this one uh, some people yeah they, they complain about that yellow 
bits there being too bright and I guess it is but it doesn't well, look too bad. The eyes are really nice though. The, if I can get it in focus, they're that sort of compound lens type thing where they they have the texture inside and then like the uh, that bright yellow coloring and like a smooth glossy finish over the top of that like another layer to give them sort of depth and I really like it when they do that with figures and they look really nice in person um, a lot more than they do on camera so that's something I really like about this figure and can look in the mouth they have you know the little missiles there they look a little weird they're not centered at all which is unfortunate but i don't know if they were like that in the film or not just something to be mindful the teeth are actually really well done they're nicely sculpted and they lock together pretty well so that's you can really see that monster arts they have really sharp sculpts and they fit really well together that's something they excel at i have not seen a monster arts figure where i was really disappointed by the sculpt more so than anything, it's um, usually either quality control or paintwork that is a complaint with collectors about the Monster Arts line. Um, and uh, yeah, some of the articulation on this guy is a little troublesome. Um, but before I get into the negatives of that, I'll just show you one thing that I really love about this figure. And that is some of the engineering they did with the neck. Now notice how... He has these little spines back here, and how they're kind of, you can see like this sort of, uh, you can see them like poking out of the this neck piece, and the reason like they look like they're a bit separate is you can actually give his, get his head to bend fully, uh, almost straight with his body. And notice how that top, those top spines uh, that poke out of here, they actually sink in when you do this, so... You can either you can actually get them completely straight because they engineered it in a way that these sink in when when you move it in, and that's so cool. And that's something that's really uh, really impressive about this figure, and just a very big highlight of it. And you know you can get him in his flying pose and all that. And uh, again here you can see my first major complaint about this figure, and I think this is the one main thing that bothers me is uh oh, sorry about that is they have this little like his fin piece is sort of wedged between like these joints that move and you know he's got a segmented tail not too many joints because it's a very short tail it does hold really firmly which is nice and you can actually move it a lot more than it moved in the film up and down and all that but when you try and have him in a very neutral pose and this is where my my issue comes in. So that focus there. You can see the, the, the tail, it doesn't curve like nice and fluidly right here. There's this little divot that where it kind of goes as, goes in a bit concave here. You can't fix this. Like, um, I don't... Just the way it's engineered and with... I think it's something to do with getting this bit to fit in here. There's no way to bend that up, and I don't really want to put any more stress on it than I have, because I, I assure you I feel that it's not going to budge anymore from this point. And that really bothers me, because uh, my OCD always gets to me, and I always want, uh, when I'm posing my figures, for the tails to look really fluid the way they're sitting on my shelf. And yeah, the, more so than anything else, this is what uh, brings this figure down for me. If this tail could flow perfectly, and if, to some people they might be looking at that and being like, oh, it's such a little nitpick, but um, I think this is a much bigger issue than a lot of the other th things that people have been... Oh, again, it's so cool how that neck works, though, but uh, yeah, it's it's a much bigger issue than like the shoulder shoulder joint things. Like, you just... You, once you're mindful of that, then you don't have to worry about it, really. You just... You just know how to handle it from that point. And uh, a big issue, or a big thing about monster arts in general, is a lot of people judge these figures before they really learn how to move them and how to work the joints. And I think if people spent more time just with the figures and being gentle and careful and uh, basically just uh, messing around with them, 
and learning how, how they operate, they'd uh, have a better time with them and be able to hide a lot more gaps and just put them in better poses and everything and get them standing really well. And again, you can see um, it's going to be a bit out of focus for the moment, but you can you can see he stands really well. That's something I'm very happy about is uh, he, he really, even though he has very thin legs and small feet, he he's pretty well balanced. Um, the surface isn't like the most flat, but I'm not going to worry about him falling falling down or anything. And uh, going back to articulation, like I, I always say, I don't really like uh, full on like uh, pe the videos where people go through all the articulation bit by bit and be like, mm -hmm. but um, I would like to just show you guys a couple of things about him, like um, his waist joint that is ball jointed, so you can get him to rock around a bit here, rock around the clock as it were. And the tail, though, probably not going to do this a lot, <laughs> does like, it bends really awkwardly and I would have liked to seen, have seen more segments in here because I feel since he does have such a short tail, it would have been cool if each of these little bits here was its own segment. They have them in like groups of three or four, but um, yeah, maybe even if they were in groups of two it would work better. And yeah, this weird fin bit here is a bit off. But yeah, his uh, his neck articulation is pretty good actually. He has like this little uh, the sculpt is cut a bit weirdly around his neck, so there's a, a little rough edge here. Some people uh, are bothered about that. I'm not. But uh, it's kind of continued in this bit up here that's like a floating piece in the neck. It really helps to cover up any any issues and it all moves together really nicely. Actually, it's not a floating piece, it's built into the bigger part of this neck, but it, it almost could be. It just sort of helps complete the sculpt really, just the, the, that extra bit being sculpted in here. You could always line it back up. And uh, another issue I have is sort of with the jaw. When you open the jaw up, it starts to look really off-putting, especially from the side. The, I brought this up a lot because I've noticed some of the Monster Arts figures have started to do this, and they didn't used to. Uh, when you start opening up the jaws and the bottom jaw gets uh, looks longer and sort of bends at an awkward point, uh, it articulates um, much too far forward. I, I say I'd say it should be uh, deeper inside the mouth, where th this piece would continue and have that articulation point, and then it would open more smoothly, and kind of even look shorter the wider it opens. And that looks a little a little more natural on figures, I think. So if we get Kiryu right here, we actually angle the camera up so we can see him. We open his jaw. You can see his jaw looks pretty even when you open it very far. It's very even with the top jaw, and it looks really natural and it looks really nice. Again, this figure is just breathtaking, and this one would uh, when I do a review of this, I guarantee you he's getting the um oh, what what do you call it the Jet Jaguar seal of approval, which is um for those of you who have been uh, consistently watching my channel uh. He, You'd have known that that is like um, just a little meme I put up, <laughs> and basically claiming that that figure is perfect for what it is, um, and, and that's what this figure is. And yeah, you see that his jaw it opens really well, just a great, great articulation on that. This one. Um, this one, like a lot of Nekagodzillas, have this problem. It's just a plague among Nekagodzillas, and it's one of the reasons, even though they're a much more affordable figure, I still uh, don't like that line all too much. But, yeah, this... Again, this is on a ball joint, and you can kind of make him look really goofy and stupid and all that. I don't care. I don't mind if you can make him look silly. It's more if you're... If you're able to make him look good consistently is kind of kind of the issue, main issue like people complain about 
that you can make the jaw look uh, silly and can get him to have lots of gaps and look all like that. But really, what people forget is uh, how much you can make a figure look good. And that's where my issue comes in with opening the jaw, because you, you really can't fidget with it if once it's like as open as it can be, or even like just slightly open, it really just that's how it articulates and you, you can't do anything about that and unfortunately the sculpt I'd say is perfect in almost every way but uh, the it could be a little sharper I guess in some areas but I think it, fe it fits with the suit and the time and the feel of the figure but but the articulation in some points is, is an issue which is really odd because it, they did really put a lot of effort into into this that's not like that doesn't happen on like your everyday figure that bit of articulation there and you know the ball joints are strong and they feel good for the most part it's he stands well it all you know is pretty nice for the most part but then you have just that awkward tail and that jaw um, Another funny thing is you, you can get him, uh, if you're doing stop motion, you can get him to do the 360 thing with his head, which is cool. Um, I think, actually, I'm going to give him some, some slack about that jaw, because I think the reason they couldn't put it back into, um, like I said, if you move that whole, that jaw bit, like extended it further into the mouth, like inside the area back here, and then had the, jo the joint like more inside uh, inside his neck or just uh, towards the back of his head and then it opened it would open a lot more naturally kind of like if you think of an actual skull and you have the the actual jaw joint it's not like right at the very front where the mouth uh, opening is there's usually some skin or something that goes back here and then the joint is actually somewhere like here and that then it would open but here it's like it's right there is where the joint is where the, the the, the whole mouth bit parts uh, I don't know if that makes sense but it, it just I'll try <laughs> if, you, if you're confused by that uh, put it in the comments below and I'll try and explain it better either in, a, in the comments or in a future video where I'll link you to like a little Google picture or something but um, yeah if I'm gonna be lenient because I think inside the neck here they had to do a lot of engineering to actually get that to work really well uh, and yeah, that's those are my major major complaints about the figure. It's um, I think he has a great presence though, and I really love this design. And I'm just happy they're doing the 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 Showa era sculpt. So that's my overall like. It sounds like I've been complaining a lot because uh, I found a lot of other videos sounded like that, and I didn't really like those videos because I do love this figure. But it does have some real, real issues that are worth bringing up. Uh, before I get into some more stuff, I will just cut away quickly and show you like a little montage of some close-ups of this figure, because I I did uh, film a, a lot of little stuff uh, stuff earlier because I was originally aiming to do this video in a completely different style, which is um I was aiming to just film all the audio and video separately, we'll record the audio and film the video separately, and I already filmed a review's worth of close-ups and, and good shots of this figure, so I don't want to, those to go to waste, so I'll just quickly do a montage of those, so you can have a real nice look at the sculpt and everything, and then we'll c come back and I'll sh take you guys through all the, the effect pieces and stuff like that, so see you in a sec. <laughs> Thank you. 
right, guys, so I hope you enjoyed that little montage. Uh, I brought out all the effect parts that come with this figure, so this is uh, all you get aside from the box. So here we have basically all the bits for the stand, a uh, beam part, and two interchangeable hands. So I'll just take you through them all. The hands are pretty much the same thing as the normal hands, except for the fingers are gone. The fingertips are gone because in the film his uh, fingertips were missiles. So he'd shoot them out and his hands would be left like this afterwards. So we have these nice little simple hands to replace them with. So you could, you know, take these these ones out and put these ones in as you can kind of see the difference. Um, I'm not sure if these hands have like a back and a front. They actually do. Uh, come to think of it. So you can see here they have like these three dots. On the very uh, on this side, the top side, and the underside, which will be the palm, I'm guessing, just has. No, it doesn't have those dots in there. It's just a flat little block bit in the center, and that has you know the, the dots there just above his knuckles, really. So the way you'd interchange his hands, so it's actually this one that would belong here. So you just. So hopefully this works out on camera, because sometimes changing hands and bits can be a bit tricky, but you just grab it firmly and del and, is and carefully <laughs> pull that off. Sorry about that loud bang, I, I hit my uh, glass cabinet, which has the, makes that sound. Uh, and yeah, you take that off, it's got that little, little ball joint in there, and you get the new hand. And you just push it in again, firmly but gently, or carefully. And actually, always make sure when you when you're doing this, because these ball joints are double ball joints, so they can move around like this. Make sure it's very centered; it helps. It really helps it. Uh, it helps it go in. And. and there it went in sometimes if you like wobble it about when you're pushing it on it goes in a lot easier there we go we got him with uh, one of his hands hands have, have has used up all his missiles and that's pretty cool i'm probably never going to really use this on my display but it's definitely something that could be interesting if you want to go down that path and here's the the beam so you can see it's like this flat piece like this it's actually really Odd, oddly done because I'd expect it, uh, expected it that from this like we'd have the, the the bit that holds it in to be on this on the bottom of it and that from the side you could see the zigzag shape but actually the hole is this way so when it sits from the side sorry about the the, the, the exposure of the camera right now and, and the focus but from the side it's flat and from the top, you know, from the top down, it kind of looks like that, because the hole, the hole, you can see it there. And the hole actually has a little ball joint that goes into it, so you can kind of angle it, but it's still not as nice as some of the other beams would have it. It's this nice uh, color, it's the uh, trans transparent, translucent yellow, kind of slightly, slightly textured actually, it's a slightly rough texture so it's not smooth but it's got that really cool sort of technicolor colored sort of bright yellow zigzaggy uh, 70s effects lightning which is really cool that it's not one of those like modern type beams so it really fits the figure and uh, it's got this little burst uh, of energy sort of explosive bit right at the tip uh, that that comes out of out of uh, Mechagodzilla. So I'll show you how to open Mechagodzilla's chest to actually launch this thing, because this is his chest beam. It, it doesn't come with any of his eye lasers or his mouth beam or anything. But uh, the way you assemble it is you push this bit, the little ball joint, right into the there. And you know it can it can you can put it at any angle you like. I like to have it slightly angled. And you put this uh, clear rod in there. And your stand is very, very simple, very basic. It's just a little 
flat stand with a hole in it to set in the beam and you know it has actually a Toho license on it made in China and there there's your beam it's actually a brighter yellow in person I find than on on camera it's not super bright yellow either it, but but it works and now uh, a, a tricky thing about this figure which uh, uh, you got to know <laughs> in order to do this is uh, the way you open this bit because this bit does open is you see how it has these um, just this piece right here it ends like about here and goes up to here on the middle of his chest the way you open it is it's got these two little uh, tabs at the bottom because there's a hinge joint just above them under it here so the way you open it is get your fingernail or whatever uh, just make sure it, yeah right there and you press and you press very low on on one of these two tabs hopefully I can do it on camera <laughs> There we go, and you see it just flips right open, so the joint is down here, and inside we see he's got that little bright red pearl um, uh, little bit that <laughs> that's where his laser, that's where his laser comes from. All right, and all you got to do is basically just line this up. So again, this has that little ball joint, so you can. So you can really mess with this this thing. And you just line it up to where you think it looks good. So that's pretty much it. So <laughs> it it comes out of here like that, and then you got him with his laser. Or rather, his sort of lightning attack. And um, yeah, overall these effect parts uh, aren't like the, I don't think they're like on the level of some of the previous ones, especially like the the stand for it, but it actually, for what it is, it looks really nice, I, I think. It looks effective with this Godzilla, and definitely looks better in person. It definitely looks better in person than it does, say... On, on camera as you're seeing it now and while I don't think the the hands are really necessary I think they work well for what they what they are and they're just I'm glad I'm, I'd rather have them even if I'm not going to use them than uh, not have any effect parts but I I overall it actually is a really nice display option with with this like I, I I say that uh the stands not as good as some of say of the previous stands like the normal um something act Tamashi something act stands that we get with the figures uh oh god so overexposed on the camera sorry about that but especially front on it actually looks really nice so um yeah this is actually uh the the stand being so kind of light and small the, it makes it a lot less distracting which i like and overall i like the effect parts so but uh i generally don't have it displayed with them for just because i generally don't have figures displayed with effect parts and that's why for the majority of the time um a lot of reviewers complain <laughs> oh we don't have effect parts and stuff like that and i i share that sentiment but at the same time, I don't. It doesn't really affect the way I, I, whether I like a figure or not, for the most part, because I don't really use them all that much. So the main thing for me is whether the figure is good or not. And yeah, so he just put his hand back on. Now we got Mechagodzilla. All back, back to normal. And um, yeah, so uh, that's about. All I have to say for, you know, the effect parts, the sculpt, and the paint, it's, it's really, it is what it is, and, um, speaking of, uh, of, uh, starting to get towards the end of the review, before I give you my final, final thoughts and conclusions on the figure, let's cut to 
the size comparison, which uh, I, I think is partially one of uh, everyone's favorite parts of the review. So let's cut to that. Alright guys, so I hope you enjoyed that size comparison and you kind of got to see this one. He, he's actually a, a fairly average height, but it is, in terms of bulkiness, he seems a little small. Which is part of the reason why I think, um, yeah, people sort of uh, see lesser value in this guy. And I, uh, I will admit that um, this one is one of Monster Art's weaker figures, but... Um, Personally, I think he's a little better just in terms of uh, the character and, and just um, uh, basically because he is the, the figure that he is, the, the, the character that he is than something like, say, Mogira or Mechagodzilla, the Heisei version. So I, I really do praise it for that and for capturing some of that meanness and finally giving us a new sculpt. That's like... Just a really cool thing whenever we get a monster art sculpt and for the most part. I love the sculpt. I think it's very accurate to the character In in some ways that even make it seem a little worse than say something like the uh, The Kiryu figure which again this one is my second favorite Mechagodzilla figure which I own the first one of course being Kiryu because you really can't beat this figure. This one is just perfect, really. Uh, like I like I said earlier, but um, overall, like I said, this this figure is kind of below average quality-wise for monster arts. It depends on which monster arts, really. Uh, I'd say the sculpt is fantastic. Some of the art, the paints. Um, I actually have no no real problems with the paint. It's nothing like super fancy, but it's not like the bottom of the barrel type stuff for this line. Like um. Uh, a lot of people would cite Shin Godzilla as having a poor paint job. I would disagree. I think there are s uh, definitely some cases where that has happened, but just the standard um, paint they did on them was fine. Uh, but there, there are some where they went a bit lazy, like say the uh, GMK Godzilla, the 54 could have been done a little better, stuff like that. Uh, so all around I'd say that this one's actually pretty pretty accurate and though I would have liked to have seen more highlighting and variation I'm sure we'll see that in the next release. So it's just something to think about but uh, Ultimately, I would I would recommend this figure to anyone who Does like this character who is a big 74 Mechagodzilla fan because I love this figure and um, yeah, it does have problems like like the tail and that jaw. That's pretty much it. The tail, the jaw, the sculpt is really solid. Um, some places people might look at it and be like, eh, it's a bit rough, but it kind of it actually really matches the suit. I find uh, just the way the, the rubber suit was. So yeah, that's my thoughts on this figure. Unfortunately, I am. Um, I can't like super bash on it or like super love it uh, aesthetically like like with some figures so it's going to be sort of a more a less interesting conclusion but uh it's my honest thoughts about this figure that I, I'm really happy I have him he has issues he has really good things about him as well uh just um basically if you look at photos and you like it then you will like it in person I think it looks better in person to be uh frank with you guys uh, but if you're looking, looking at it and you um, are off-put by a lot of the problems, then you're going to be off-put by them in person too. 
And yeah, that's that's my video for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, I'm not sure what uh, what review I'm going to do next, but I have a lot of stuff lined up and in the works. So do stick around for that stuff. And yeah, may all your vinyl be a radiated vinyl. Over and out. Thank you.